Hello everyone, it is Charlie here. I hope you're all well and doing good. I am going to be doing another what I've read recently video today. I started this series of videos last year, I think it was October or maybe November, and I haven't actually done one of these videos since, which is really bad. So I'm gonna aim um, from for him here on in um, to do these at least once a month. Um, so I guess it'll kind of be like a monthly wrap up. Um, but these books here are not books that I've read within the last month. They are things that I've read since doing the last one of these videos. Uh, not all of the books, but just books that I kind of feel like I have a lot to um, say on. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So first up is a graphic novel series, and this is... Postal by Matt Hawkins, Brian Hill, Isaac Goodhart and Betsy Gonia. So I have read all of the volumes that are currently out in this. So that is volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, volume five, and volume six um, and then the seventh volume comes out towards the end of this year so I'm just going to get rid of the latter volumes because obviously I don't want to talk too much about those and we're going to focus on volume one so this series is set in a town called Eden and everybody that lives in Eden is a criminal of some description and they live there because this town is very much off the grid um, so if you were to search for it in, you know, the maps on your phone, nothing would come up. Um, so these people get to kind of start their lives again, um, sort of stay hidden from the government, that kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's ruled over, it's a very tight ship. Um, if you do commit a crime there, you are killed, it isn't stood for, um, and in this first volume, the body of a young woman is found, and our main character is a young boy called Mark, who has Asperger's, and part of that condition means that he notices details in things that an average person might not necessarily and he becomes really kind of obsessed with sort of finding out who this girl was and what happened to her and in doing so he kind of unleashes this whole um can of worms really on this town and secrets that are being hidden there even secrets that his own mother laura who is the mayor of the town is um holding and um as we go along in the other volumes, you have the one thread that is connected to the, the murder of this girl in this town. And then we start to meet kind of other characters in the town and we sort of see why they are there and what is going on with them. Um, the artwork, I'll just show you, the artwork is absolutely uh, just phenomenal. I really hope my camera's focusing. Um, it, it's, I just absolutely love the artwork of this. It's very um, kind of colourful and I feel like it's the perfect art style for um, this graphic novel. Here we go. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, so as I said, I've read volume one to six of this and I am completely obsessed. This series is phenomenal. Um, it is, it's one of those series where once you pick it up and you start reading, you just cannot stop and you have to just keep buying the next volume and the next volume. I, as I've been reading this, I've literally haven't read anything else. I've just been reading one volume after another after another. Kind of got it, I've got to wait so long for volume seven. Um, but it's just so, so good. It's really kind of action-packed, there's a lot happening. Um, I love how we get to meet all the different characters in this town. Mark, as a main character, is just fantastic. I mean, I don't know um, a great deal about Asperger's, but I feel like it is handled, what I do know, I feel like it is handled pretty well, and it's really interesting to see um, what it's like to live in a world with that condition. Um, 
so if you're kind of new to graphic novels and you don't really know where to start or you're just trying to find something new to give a try i would highly recommend this if you're a fan of crime if you're a fan of sort of stephen king type of towns um if you are a fan of books where you're sort of like a f kind of fly on the wall getting to meet all the different characters again this is a series that you need to try out it is it's just sublime it's really well written and i have been absolutely loving it i've given five stars to every volume of this series so far um because to me it was just it was just a perfect story and i really really recommend it next up is a manga series and this is a silent voice by yoshitoki oima and so far i have read volumes one volume two and I am currently reading volume three. These are a bit shiny, so they might be sending my camera out of focus. Um, but again, as with the graphic novel, I'm just going to talk about volume one in case you haven't yet read it. This story is about a boy called Shoya and a girl called Shoko. Let me just double check that. I can never remember the names. Um, and Shoko starts at Shoya's school. Um, and he bullies her and he bullies her so so badly to the point where she has to leave the school and when she leaves the school he becomes he kind of becomes the target then and um some time goes by and he suddenly realizes one day that he needs to find shoko and he needs to um he needs to put it right. He needs to put right what he did to her. Because um, he realises how horrible he was. This story is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure you've heard it talking about lots before. Because I know it's very well loved. And I never really thought that it would be my kind of story. Um, but it's just... Yeah, like I said, it's just completely... It's completely beautiful. It's just this amazing story about acceptance and how it is okay to be different um, and also about the effects that your actions and your words can have on other people it is just so well done um the the artwork is really 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 amazing and i have been completely flying through this i believe there is seven volumes um, and I'm actually going to um, go and buy volume 4 tomorrow, I think. Um, so I can go straight into it. It's just a really, really, really great, great series. And I'm very much looking forward to continuing on with it. Um, so far, the two volumes that I have read, I have given five stars to. Um, I can certainly see where all the hype comes from with this series. Um, so that is A Silent Voice. Next up is Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard and this is a YA contemporary and it's about two best friends called Eden and Bunny and um, they've been best friends for a really long time and um, Eden has always thought that there was no kind of secrets between them um, but one day Bonnie runs away with their teacher and... Um, Eden didn't know anything about it, but automatically, because they're such close friends, Eden sort of becomes under suspicion of everybody. Like Bonnie's parents and the police, they all think that she must have known that this was going on. And it kind of leads her to question their friendship, but then Bonnie starts to um, contact her and sort of tell her where she is and what's going on. But Eden promises to keep that secret. But then she sort of thinks, why should I keep this a secret when somebody who's supposed to be my best friend couldn't tell me anyway? And it's about her trying to find her best friend and also sort of um, realising that she didn't really know her as well as she thought she did. Um, this, 
I, I read this in one day. I, I couldn't put it down. It was, it was really kind of fast and easy to get through. Um, I gave it four stars on Goodreads. Um, on reflection, I think it was probably more of a 3.5 stars. Um, just because even though it was really good and I thought Eden as a main character um, was fantastic and I loved finding out her backstory because um, she'd been adopted and that kind of stuff. Um, but I just didn't think it was anything particularly original. Um, I felt like it sort of dragged a little bit in the middle and then the end was kind of it sort of was very quickly over, um, so it was a bit of an anti-climax. But if you're looking for just kind of a bit more of a fast-paced, um, light sort of read, then I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's a solid contemporary, and I did enjoy it. Um, like I said, I read it within one day, um, and often I don't do that with contemporaries. You guys know that's not my favourite genre, so that definitely says something about you know, how good it was. So that is Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernal. Next up is a, another contemporary and this is Second Best Friend by Non Pratt. If you've been uh, around my channel for a long time, you will know that despite the fact that I don't like contemporary books really, Non Pratt is my favourite author. She is kind of auto-buy for me. Um, her books are just always fantastic. I'm always easily gripped into them. Um, and this is another story actually about um, best friends. It's a really, really nice, um, it's a really, really nice edition. It's one of the really thin um, Barrington Stoke editions with the kind of big spaced out writing um, because this is for sort of reluctant readers and also people who are dyslexic, that kind of thing. And Non has brought out two books in this series so far. Um, and this is about a girl called Jade, um, who's best friends with a girl called Becky. And Becky is, just seems to be perfect at everything she does. Everyone loves her. And it's kind of a story about um, jealousy and the lengths that your jealousy can make you go. Um, really, I mean, you know, there's always someone in life that we're going to envy. Someone who has something that we really want. But... It's kind of how, if you let those things, like, go away with you, how bad the repercussions can be. Um, another fantastic, fantastic book by Non. Again, another one that I flew through. Um, I gave it five out of five stars on Goodreads. Not of quite high star ratings here, but I just don't have the heart to, like, not give Non Pratt's books a five star. She's fantastic. Um, so if you're like me and you don't really like contemporary, I would definitely check out Non Pratt's books. She's just, she's just wonderful. Next up is a horror novella called Blanky and it is by Keelan Patrick Burke. Um, it is super short, as I said, it is a novella. And this is about a guy called Stephen, whose um, baby daughter, Robin, um, has died. Uh, th it says it's like three months. This story starts three months after she has died and um, he is not dealing too well with it. It has put a strain on his marriage and his wife is now not living with him. So he is in the house where this horrible tragic event happened and he spends his days watching sitcoms and just drinking whiskey um, and one day when he is in there he hears this sound um coming from what used to be robin's room and so he decides to go and take a look it sounds like something's being dragged along the floor and when he goes in there he finds her blanket or blanky um as it was also known um which kind of seems ordinary right but the thing is that he buried the blanket with Robin. So it's kind of like, how the hell has this got there? Um, I have never read... This is my first Keelan Patrick Burke book. Um, and people kept recommending him to me, saying he was a really, really good horror author. Um, I think his books are self-published. I think. Um, and I don't seem to have much luck with self-published books. I always feel like there's a lot of... Um, like mistakes in them and things like that. I feel like they need to be proofread a little bit more. Um, this one was brilliant. A really fantastic, strong 
um, horror novel. And I, since reading this, I, I enjoyed this so much that I've picked up another one of his books, which I think is called Hard Candy. Um, and I'm so excited to read it. I think if you are a fan of horror, um, obviously I can't speak for any of the others, but I would definitely recommend checking this out if you want like a short, sharp, creepy story. Um, and it was, it was really, really creepy. Well written. I didn't really spot any mistakes um, through this book. And uh, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it four, what did I give it? 4.5 stars on Goodreads, um, only because I wish it had been longer, but that's, I guess, not really a criticism. Um, but yeah, if you're a fan of horror, um, definitely check his books out. Next up is another horror novel, and this is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. Um, I did speak about this in my last um, book haul, but I wanted to speak about it again, because as I said then, if you saw that video, um, this is one of the best horror novels that I have read uh it was fantastic um it's really well put together so it's got the little french flaps um it's got deckled edges it's got a really cool back as well and this is about four um horror authors who are invited to go and spend the night at um one of the most one of the world's most notorious haunted houses and we largely hear from our main character sam who um, wrote a best-selling novel, but now he does kind of horror lectures. And um, in, like, one of the first chapters, um, we sort of listen in on one of his lectures, and it's so good. There's so many references to horror films, like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Ring, The Grudge. Like, it's just fantastic, and it was so interesting. It's all about, like... Um, you know, the elements that go into writing horror novels and things like that. Um, as I said, this was absolutely fantastic. It really delivered the scares. Um, I really enjoyed how we sort of find out about the history of this house, um, about the guy who owned it, and how he was found dead one night and his wife was found hanging from the tree outside the house. Um, and then th these two sisters, you can just see the figures up here, um, they moved into the house and one of them was basically never seen again until she died and the other one was also found hanging from the same tree and it was just so good it was so so well written and again if you're a fan of horror i think this is one that you need to have in your collection next up is another horror novel i've been reading a lot of horror um over this last last few months um and this is endless night by richard lemon i won't speak about this one too much because i have spoken about it before um but this is about a girl called judy who is staying over at her best friend evelyn's house when a group of killers burst in and start trying to kill everyone that is in this house this is just a typical um slasher um book so if you're a fan of slasher horror movies and things like that this will be one that you want to try out. Um, a little warning, it is extremely graphic. Um, there are some scenes that are really, really hard to read about, really hard. Um, there is rape. Um, the way these killers are dressed, I don't want to say too much, but the way they're dressed is very gruesome, very gory. So if you're not good with stuff like that, I wouldn't recommend it. But it's one hell of a fast-paced book. So if you're looking for maybe something to get you out of a slump, uh, something to just sort of get your heart racing a little bit and um, just really sort of dig yourself into, um, then this is definitely the book to go for. And um, there's actually a little um, thing on the top here that says, if you've missed Le Mans, you've missed a treat. And that's by Stephen King. And you know if Stephen King gives a good review, then it's it's going to be a good book. So those are some of the books that I have read um, lately. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, let me know down below what books you have read recently and I will see you all very soon for another video.